everybody, this is Melinda. This is my Vinyl Tag 2019 video. I watched um, so many from 2017 and 2018, uh, but didn't make one. So this year I'm gonna make my video and I'm really excited about it. Um, the first question is my best find for uh, 2018. Um, it has to be my Beatles yesterday and today. I was in a small record store and looking through and I noticed on here it said um, butcher cutter paste over and the price was $30 and it is in fact uh, I don't know if you can see but there's Ringo's V right here um, this is a second state butcher cover so um, worth a lot more than $30 and I was really excited to get it and also I just love Beals music so and the record was in good shape too so really exciting find for me uh, it's next one is to give shout outs um, and I'm gonna give shout outs to people who I've had a lot of really great people um, that have commented on videos but there's some people who've taken it a little bit step farther and reached out to me in some really special ways um, peaches from the vinyl countdown uh, Brett vinyl victim uh, happy hippie the vinyl guy uh, Ron Haggerty, um, all of those people have great, great uh, videos, and I really enjoy them a lot, and super nice people as well. Um, there's also one I want to point out, um, and it's a guy named Chris from Tunes from the Man Cave. And um, there was a video that he put out um, during Noble Records' uh, 750 sub giveaway contest, and for me, it was probably one of, or maybe my very favorite vinyl video I've ever seen. So if you all have a chance, look that one up. Um, it is, again, it's um, Tunes from the Man Cave, and it was a Noble Records 750 sub giveaway contest entry, and uh, pop you some popcorn. It's not really about a certain genre of music or anything. It's really just a, a story about why he loves vinyl, the passion he has. He's a great storyteller and so those are my shout outs. Uh, the next one is what holes do you want to fill in your collection? Well I am um, anytime I see something really great from Van Halen I'm gonna go for it. I'm looking for Japanese pressings of Van Halen getting close to fulfilling the studio albums. Um, also uh, I would love to have some Garth Brooks in my life. I really I don't have a single album uh, and I would just love to find some Garth Brooks. I wish he'd reissue some things, but I'd like to be on the lookout for some um, some Garth Brooks. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, and so the next question is cheap album that is really good. So I'm going to go ahead and show this one. It is Billy Squire. It is a very inexpensive record. But it is fantastic, so we just got to get that Rock Me Tonight video out of our heads for a minute and just think about this. Um, this record has In the Dark, My Kind of Lover, uh, Lonely is the Night, I Need You, Don't Say No. It is, it's a killer album and I really like it. You can get it anywhere for really cheap, so. Uh, the next question is, uh, a favorite side project well um, this is a fun side project and I they they did it for fun they look like they were having a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it it is uh, the damn Yankees it is um, Mar Michael Cardelloni and he was um, he's done things for except Leonard Skinner John Fogarty and Cher he's done a lot of work for them it's also um, Tommy Shaw of Styx Ted Nugent and Jack Blades of Night Ranger. So they got together and they made a few albums. They made two that got released and I've heard there's one that was never released. Um, anyway, I think it's a lot of fun and I enjoyed this record when it came out. Uh, an album that is uncharacteristic of other albums. <laughs> well, um, this one was one that was like a, um, nearly killed them, nearly run them off the cliff. Um, they were kind of going sideways with a couple records before that, but when they came out with this, and it's Kiss the Elder, uh, their careers took a nosedive. This was a concept record about a young boy out to save the world, and um, 
didn't go over very well. Um, so this is very uncharacteristic. It was a total switch around. I think they were trying to do something so that people would take them more seriously and it backfired. Um, this would also probably be a good contender for me for worst album cover. Um, and I'm gonna quote Paul Stanley. This is a good album, but it is not a good Kiss album. I do enjoy it, but it's not characteristic of, stick, of uh, Kiss, so anyway. That's my choice for that. Um, okay, this is, uh, the next one is the last uh, record that I picked up. And I did not buy it. I actually, okay, I actually got this uh, today. It was a VCLT. It is from a, a lady named Nicola. And uh, her channel is Wax Reliquary. It is spelled R-E-L-I-Q-U-A-R-Y. And um, this anyway, this is my VCLT, and I'm very excited. Uh, she sent me this um, Van Halen 45. It is a 45 of Hot for Teacher and Little Dreamer, and it's got this really neat poster in it. Um, well, I better not pull it out right now, but anyway, this is just a really cool, cool thing to get. Um, Nicola, if I was in a record store and I saw this, I would snatch it and it would probably be my favorite find of the day so for you to just watch one of my videos and think of me and go and go through and send something to me thank you so much uh, it made my day I was so excited and uh, I just really appreciate it so thank you um, okay a great album with a really bad cover uh, that was an easy one for me this is sticks Pieces of Eight, and um, I don't really, I'm all for middle-aged women, I think they're great, <laughs> but I don't really understand what this has to do with um, the song Renegade or any of the great songs that are on here. So anyway, this is Styx, and this is my choice for a bad album cover of a great album. The next one is a cool cover, but bad record, and I'm gonna give this one to <laughs> Kiss Wins Again. <laughs> Peter Chris of KISS, this is his solo album that came out, um, I believe they came out in 1978. Um, I actually think his makeup, his when I was a kid, his makeup was my favorite. I think this is a really cool album cover, but not a good record, so. Okay, um, the next one is a blues album, and I chose Stevie Ray Vaughan. This is a record that, um, you know, my husband doesn't really like all my KISS or some of my other things, but this is something we can both listen to and really enjoy. And um, this is just uh, one of those things where um, I remember where I was. I was in college, but I had a job in a bakery deli, and I remember I was cutting vegetables, listening to the radio. They stopped whatever was playing and announced that he had been killed in a, a helicopter crash or a really small plane, I'm not really sure. But um, anyway, I remember hearing about that. Um, and I think it was because the DJ was really upset and really talked about it for a long time. So anyway, Stevie Ray Vaughan, my blues record. And the next one is Earworm. And I'm gonna, the Earworm one, the one that gets stuck in your head. And I've got three, so I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. The first one is off of Egypt Station. This is Paul McCartney's uh, most recent album that I really like. Um, and there's a song on here, Come On To Me. And I um, heard that No Charlie's the other night and I about to never got it out of my head. So it's in a good way though. I do like that song. And then another one is the band Sweet, Fox on the Run. Anytime I hear it, it's in my head for the rest of the day. Another good song, but that's a good earworm song for me. And finally, this is the earworm song of all time, in my opinion. And once you hear it, you'll never unhear it. And it is from Paul McCartney again, and it's called Temporary Secretary. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look it up. But I'm warning you, you know, don't be mad at me if you do play it and then it stays in your head because it is truly a quirky song, a crazy song. I kind of like it to tell you the truth. Um, but anyway, um, listen at your own warning. Uh, let's see, the next record is Historically Important Artists. And I kind of took this a little bit differently than Maybe I should have, or however, you know, other people are doing. I've seen people posting the Beatles already. Um, uh, 
Bob Dylan, and of course that's absolutely correct. They're great choices. I just picked this. I picked the Eagles' greatest hits, and the reason why I picked this is because it is historically the number one selling record of all time. So I just thought that, you know, and I love the Eagles, and, and you can't beat this record. It's terrific. So um, anyway, that is my historical uh, artists because they've made history by being the best-selling record of all time. And uh, the next one is uh, an album I own because of my mom. And this is going to be the best of Tommy James and the Shondells. And uh, he, they had a lot of great hits. I remember hearing this as a kid. I'm gonna show you a picture. This picture, when I was a little kid, it's like a negative, it scared me to death when I was a kid. So, um, and anyway, there's great songs on here. Ball of Fire, Crystal, Blue Persuasion, Crimson and Clover, Moni Moni, I Think We're Alone Now, Tiffany Didn't Write It. This actually, he didn't write it either, Tommy James didn't either, but he sang it. There's Hanky Panky. Um, I just know every song by heart on this record and I really like it. And of course it reminds me of my mom. So, um, the next, uh, 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 the best dollar bin find. This is the best dollar bin find I've ever had. It is sticks, the grand delusion. Uh, and I really, I mean, you can see I, on this, I paid a dollar for it and I have gotten more bang for the buck on this dollar uh, as far as listening to a record. This is probably my favorite Sticks record, even though there's a ton of them that are I really like. So um, my best dollar bin find is Sticks, The Grand Delusion. Uh, my favorite 2LP record is going to be Prince 1999. And uh, I really like it. Um, I came from a, a home where mom, we weren't allowed to say darn or heck, so Prince makes me blush sometimes, um, but his music is great, his, um, the songs are great, 1999, Little Red Corvette, uh, I love the song Automatic, I've always loved that song from here, Free, I've always loved that, Lady Cab Driver, anyway, it's, it's a really good uh, record, and even though it has some, you know, some words in it, uh, to tell you the truth, when I went to a football game the other night, I heard some of that same language um, flying out just in the stands. So, anyway, Prince's 1999, my favorite 2 LP set. Uh, the next one is, um, this is a record that I um, was told about through the VC that I bought. And I'm, it is uh, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. And I really love this record. And... Um, I guess the story behind this one is um, I'm a big fan. Um, I enjoy the videos um, a guy named Billy Hurst makes. I've probably seen all of his. Um, and I don't know when he made a video, but he made a video and he was showing what records he thought were tens. And it seemed like everything he was showing, I was like, yeah, I agree. Yes, yes, yes. And then he popped this one up and I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure I've heard that one before. I I knew The Wall and I knew Dark Side of the Moon. and um, some others, but I did not know this one, and oh my gosh, my husband and I, we spent our summer uh, in a pool laying um, on floats just listening to this. We really enjoy it, the, the both of us together, so this is my choice for that. Um, the next one is um, an album you could fall asleep to, and I never listen to anything when I fall asleep, um, so I don't have a good choice for that one. I suppose if I was going to, I would pick Air Supply. They, this is a greatest hits compilation and it is um, full of uh, really slow, mellow songs. One of the songs is called Sweet Dreams, so that would probably be one I could fall asleep to. So, um, okay, and then the next one is saying some, maybe give some advice to someone who wants to join the VC and start making videos. Uh, I'm brand new at this and so I really don't have any good advice, but I will share a mistake that I feel like I've made in the past. Um, before I started making videos myself, I've spent a very long time watching so many of um, some really great people's videos um, and, and I did push the like button on them, but I never commented. Um, I, I really didn't say a whole lot. 
and I really wish I would have because that I think they deserved the recognition. I really wish I would have just told them, you did a great job today, because I think everybody needs that encouragement sometimes. And um, in fact, when I finally did comment to somebody, I just told them, they made me laugh that day. They just, they were fun, the video was great. And I just told them, you know, you did a really good job. You're really funny and I enjoy you. And I could tell it meant a lot to them. So it makes me realize, you know, out of all these people and all these times that I've watched videos and I didn't comment, um, I really regret that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let this video go and uh, I'm just really thankful for getting the opportunity and this has been a lot of fun. So thank you all and have a good night. Thank you.